in the deepest ocean, high in the highest mountain, deep in the deepest ocean, high in the highest mountain, in the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation, in the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. In Alhamdulillah. نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Dear viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm your host, Kareem Abu Zaid. And this is episode number 46 from your series, Aqeedah Matters. And this is the final subject, uh, the final episode, talking about Iman. Uh, remember, uh, we have broken the series uh, into segments. Let's call them segments. The first segment was the introduction. Just paving the way, uh, talking about the definition of aqeedah, the different words that we use to call aqeedah with. Then we spoke about the characteristics of the aqeedah, wasatiya. Then we spoke about Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, saved sects, what these terminologies do mean. Uh, we, we spoke about that in, in 17 episodes. That was the first segment. We call it introduction, introduction to the subject of Aqeedah. Then the second segment, we called it the sources of our belief system, the sources of our beliefs, the sources of our Aqeedah, where we present it to you, the fundamental sources, the primary sources, and the secondary sources. The primary sources, the Quran, the Sunnah, the Ijma', the consensus, and the secondary sources, the intellect, al-aql, wal-fitrah, and the natural state, provided that the aql is still, the intellect, the reasoning is still sound, and the fitrah is not corrupt. Uh, those are secondary sources. And we presented this, I think, in, in, in almost uh, also 17, 18, maybe uh, 19 episodes then we are dealing with the third segment which is in reality the first subject of aqeedah you see uh, sources of, of aqeedah and introduction eh, still pavement but really the first subject of aqeedah is iman and kufr what is the definition of iman and what is the definition of kufr? And what makes a person a believer? And what makes a person a disbeliever? Oh. Alhamdulillah, Iman, this is the last episode, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, presenting it to you. We defined Iman for you. According to Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, there is a consensus regarding that definition. Al Imam Abu Abdullah. Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, said that I have met a thousand of the scholars of the provinces from the righteous predecessors. All of them defined faith, iman, to be saying, he meant the beliefs of the heart, the saying of the heart, the statement of the heart, and the saying of the tongue, and action, and the action of the heart, and the action of the limbs, and it increases and decreases. So there is a consensus regarding Iman, regarding Iman. And we presented that definition upon which there is the consensus. A compound of the following components, the statement of the heart, the belief of the heart, the tasdiq, the acknowledgement of the heart, Allah exists, there are angels, books, messengers, day of resurrection and there is qadr 
and a lot of you are tackled with the word statement of the heart saying of the heart but if you realize if you realize that the spiritual aql, intellect is in the heart you will understand what i'm talking about so really the knowledge which you accumulate about the six articles of faith and it causes your heart to believe in them firmly which we call acknowledgement which we call tasdeeq but that tasdeeq is not sufficient like al murji'a said rather that tasdeeq must turn your heart to will to act must lead your heart to will to act that knowledge ma'rifa that recognition huh, must uh, and that tasdeeq that that acknowledgement must turn the heart to will to act intend man allah created me he's the one who given me the life that i have he's the one who who will take it away from me uh, and he's the one who's going to raise me in the day of resurrection and i'm hoping that he will forgive my sins and i'm hoping that he's going to place me in jannah uh, all of this is what tasdeeq with the heart acknowledgement with the heart now what the action of the heart man i must now stand up and pray intention i must stay from the haram i cannot be smoking i cannot be abandoning wearing the hijab i cannot be guilty of, of backbiting and gossiping i because i fear allah i hope in allah i love allah huh? action of the heart i uh, but this is difficult to do I, i'm gonna rely on allah he's going to help me out to do this the action of the heart so the heart is what the 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 the, 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 the igniter i call it the igniter the energizer that's why the prophet says what in your body there is a heart if it is sound the rest of the limbs will be sound the heart what will mobilize the tongue will speak i'm a muslim with your heart ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah the tongue will speak let me recite the quran to you let me enjoy good forbid evil and allahu akbar salah so everything started with the action of the heart important and it increases and decreases the more you take from knowledge the more you act your iman increases the lesser your knowledge if it is the lesser action you you do the lesser your conviction is to the religion uh, the, your, your iman drops and oh, add to this if you indulge if you get involved engaged in major in, in sinning that you're going to this way your iman drops so this is the definition of iman and this is we must this is the definition that we must all strive to adopt and to believe because this is what will bring the ummah back on track because this is what got the companions to be the leaders in earth in a record time because they they, they understood this is iman now uh, and, and, and then we we presented to you the deviations those who went astray from that definition and we said the definition of Iman was one of the earliest subjects of disagreement, of dispute amongst the Muslims. But again, I want to remind you that there is a consensus regarding the proper, the, the proper definition, the one that I just quoted. The, the definition that I just presented to you, that there is a consensus regarding it. There is a consensus regarding it amongst the Muslims. And I have quoted to you in, in the previous episodes where that consensus uh, is, is transmitted and is compiled. Huh? Now, deviations, you end up with two extremes. Like when we describe the, uh, the, the characteristic uh, of the uh, belief system of the saved sect of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is the middle path. The middle way. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَى You see in the middle, when you're in the middle, there are two extremes. And every command which Allah commands us to do, لِلشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغَتَان There are two inputs that shaytan can instill into the hearts, minds, and souls of Muslims. The first one is negligence. And the second one is extremism. The truth is in the middle. Negligence we have al murji'ah what did al murji'ah say regarding the subject of iman they said listen iman is just tasdeeq the first component that listen you believe allah exists there is jannah there is hell hmm? 
and there are angels, there are books, there are messengers, and there is a day of resurrection, and there is qadr. You believe it, you make tasdiq of that, you're good to go. You're number one. Top salah, zakah, hajj, fasting. Huh? No, no, no. It's, this is a fruit. This is beside the point. It's not a component of iman. It's not part of iman. It's not a condition for the validity of iman. Your iman is valid without this. Ah, that is very dangerous. This would admit Abu Talib, Fir'aun, the Pharaoh, Iblis, the people of the book. They would, they would be A1 believers if this is the definition. So that's one A, one extreme. The other extreme, they say what? Iman, listen. They said what? You have to act. Actions of the heart, the tongue, the saying of the tongue, and the action of the limbs is a component of Iman and is or are conditions for Iman to be valid. But they ended up being another extreme. They said, but Iman is one solid reality. It does not increase nor decrease. If you mess up with it, if some of it is gone, all of it is gone. And they ended up labeling Muslims who commit major sins to be non-Muslims. And they say that they are disbelievers. Huh? And of course, if you label somebody to be a disbeliever, you, you, could, you could end, end up killing them. You could, uh, you, 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 could get, uh, end up, you could end up taking away their wealth, their women. Huh? There are rules that are contingent upon labeling people to be this. That's why be, be careful. You take him out of the fold of Islam because of a major sin that he committed. And he will stay in the hellfire for eternity. Uh, that's another extreme. Listen, we say that a person may, may attain that awful status, provided what? That he legalizes, he makes lawful the unlawful. Or he rejects the command knowingly. He has the knowledge. Huh? Uh, he's not doing this out of faulty interpretation of the text. Or he's not forced. Or he's not doing this out of forgetful. We, we do have a way to accommodate that. But we believe that as long as a person has the tasdiq and he commits a major sin, he can repent and go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will accept him and he could end up to be in Jannah. We do have a lot of texts that can establish that. طيب. Very important. So we presented the deviated uh, uh, sects, the two extremes regarding the definition of Iman. And in the previous episode, we presented to you the levels of Iman. We said that Iman increases and decreases. Iman is not one solid fact like the Murji'a said and like the Mu'tazila and Khawarish said. They said Iman is a constant uh, a reality. No, we believe that Iman increases and decreases. And we quoted so many evidence, Surah Al-Anfal, Surah Al-Kahf, and also uh, Surah Al-Fatih, and the Hadith. هو الذي أنزل السكينة في قلوب المؤمنين ليزدادوا إيمانا مع إيمانهم. So there are levels of Iman. We said there are three levels. There is the bare minimum, which is called the origin Below that, you cannot have any. Below that, you're no longer a believer. Uh, and we mentioned that person can doubt easily that Iman, that faith which he possesses, will not protect him or prevent him from, uh, protect him or prevent him from committing major sins. And most probably he's going to have to go to hell for these major sins, if Allah wills, تحت المشيئة. Again, we don't decide who goes and who doesn't go. That's not our business. <laughs> Stay away from that, okay? But the danger is not in that. You see, Allah can forgive. MashaAllah. In Allah, Ya ibn Adam, O son of Adam, if you come on the day of resurrection with, with earth filled with sins, with one condition that you do not associate someone in worship with me. Here's the danger. Possessing only the bare minimum knowledge of Tawheed, if you end up at the hand of someone who is well versed, he can make you doubt. He can make you believe in the divinity of a created being. Divinity of Jesus, divinity of Imams, divinity of Sheikh Tariqas. Ah. You lose that bare minimum of Tawheed 
ده بير مينيموم في تصديق which is necessary to save you in the day of resurrection that's actually the, in my opinion the most risky aspect of this uh, particular uh, level that's why you need to move up to the next level which is what الايمان الواجب the reality of iman uh, where your tasdeeq is higher your yaqeen your certainty is high and also uh, your commitment to uh, to uh, fulfilling the commands is high and your uh, conviction to stay away from the haram the major sins is high uh, and uh, you this is the premise for you to go to the uh, other uh, the highest level uh, which is the complete iman the recommended iman in this episode quickly inshallah uh, actually it will complement the previous episode uh, we're just gonna present the levels of iman um, but from another perspective uh, uh, that uh, uh, hadith jibril alayhi salam introduced to us al hadith is beautiful and imagine this hadith is is out of this world al rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam was sitting with his companions the hadith for sahih imam al-bukhari wa muslim huh? Umar ibn Khattab and Abu Hurairah and other companions narrated this hadith. So we know that the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were banned from asking questions. Uh, they kept asking questions, asking questions. Allah then said, don't ask any questions. No more asking. The companions who are living in Medina with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But someone who would come out of town like a Bedouin, he's allowed. <laughs> That's why Alice ibn Malik made that statement. كان يعجبنا البدوي we would enjoy the Bedouin الفقيه but the one who has good fiqh, good understanding of the religion to come and ask a question so we can learn. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa was sitting with his companions one day and by all the sudden إذ طلع علينا رجل Someone approached them. Here is a description of this man. Wearing very white clothes. Shadidu bayad al-thiyab. Two. Shadidu sawad al-shar. His hair is very black. Here it is. La yura alayhi athar al-safar. He is so clean that you would dismiss the fact that he was traveling. Because when you travel in the desert, in the Arabia, you're going to have dirt, uh, you know, in, in your clothes or... Or, or dirt in your beard or you know dusted you're going to be dusted hmm. like uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about uh, those who uh, went to perform hajj and they are standing in Arafah they came to me dusted and, and, and sh the shev shoveled huh? so this one so th there is no sign of, of, a tr of a traveler of a wayfarer on him but no one knows him that he's out of town too, from out of town too. You see the, the contradiction here between the two? Uh, because if you're not a traveler, or the signs of travel are not on your body, in your clothes, uh, you're not tired, you're not dusted, huh? so you must be local. Then they said, but no one knows him. In any rate, he sat in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he placed his bones on his thighs. وقال يا محمد He said, O oh Muhammad, ما الإسلام? What is الإسلام? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what? الإسلام. Islam. أن تشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وأن تقيم الصلاة المفروضة in one of the wording. The testimony of faith then the five daily prayers, وَأَن تُؤْتِ الزَّكَاةِ the 2.5%, the zakah, the mandatory zakah, وَأَن تَصُومَ رَمَضَانِ and that you observe the fasting of the month of Ramadan, وَأَن تَحُجَّ الْبَيْتَ إِنْ اسْتَطَعْتَ إِلَى ذَلِكَ سَبِيلًا and that you perform hajj if you're able to. The questioner said, صَدَقْت you spoke the truth. The companions, فَعَجِبْنَا we were amazed. He's asking him, and at the same time, he's verifying his answer. He's saying that you spoke the truth. What is wrong? 
then what is Iman? What is Iman? He is not asking the reality of Iman, which we've been explaining. He's asking about the pillars of Iman. He said, and to billah, that you believe in Allah. You believe that Allah exists, He is the Lord, He has the most beautiful names, lofty attributes, and that He deserves your worship. And to billah. وَمَلَائِكَةَ Angel, كتب, books, رُسُلُ uh, Messengers, the last day and the predestination, القدر. It's good and what we consider bad. Don't attribute evil to Allah. Don't attribute bad to Allah. لا يُنسَبِ الشَّرُّ لِلَّهِ what, there is a divine wisdom even behind the things that we consider them to be bad. Then Jibreel said, uh, uh, then, uh, then the questioner, I cannot reveal myself, then the questioner sa uh, said, you spoke the truth. Hmm. Then we were amazed. He's asking and at the same time he's verifying his answer. Then he said, Mal ihsan? What is al-ihsan? Qala an ta'budallaha that you worship Allah as if you see Allah. Of course, we cannot see Allah in this world. But the least now that you know that Allah sees you. That you know that Allah sees you wherever you go. He said, you spoke the truth. Uh, then the question about the hour, that is irrelevant to our discussion here. Uh, but at the end, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Umar, do you know who is this Umar? He said, Allah wa Rasulu a'lam. Then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Umar, Thaka Jibreel, this is Jibreel, atakum liyuallimakum deenakum. He came to teach you the religion. In another wording, he came to ask questions on your behalf because you respected, you adhered, you submitted to the command of Allah and he did not ask me questions. As a reward, Allah sent Jibreel to ask questions on your behalf. Now the scholars, they say, these three questions, Islam, Iman, Ihsan, are three levels in the religion. Ah. Like the three levels which I introduced in the previous episode. Islam is the bare minimum. That you cannot have less than it. The bare minimum of tasdiq, the shahadatayn, bare minimum. That Allah exists, Allah is not free, Allah was not begotten, Allah is not to beget, is not to beget yani, uh, a son, Allah doesn't have a son like the Christians would say. Bare minimum, Allah created Jannah and hell, there is a day of resurrection, bare minimum, without any details. Huh. Shahadatayn, and that you do Islam, salah, zakah, hajj, fasting, uh, if you're able to of course, ah. so bare minimum. That the bare minimum. The second level is Iman, which is the wajib Iman. The reality of Iman. Uh, like I said, Islam, Muslims may not uh, be prevented uh, or may not be protected from committing major sins because they have the bare minimum. That's why you would see a Muslim who would backbite, who would gossip. He would go and be the first line in the salah. As soon as he comes out of the masjid, he would run his tongue. Why? Because he has the bare minimum of tasdiq, the bare minimum of everything. But the next level up is al-iman, which is the iman al-wajib. That actually you believe in Allah, your consciousness of Allah increases. Angels, books, messengers, day of resurrection, qadr. Huh? But that Iman, that faith which you possess, prevents you from committing major sins. And he makes sure that you are performing the mandatory acts of worship, at least. Oh, at least. That person may fall into minor sins, but he's certainly away from major sins. He's not involved in usury. He's not involved in adultery. He's not involved in stealing, cheating, huh. major sins. Huh. Now, Ihsan, that you leave the disliked, you perform the nawafil. To the extent that you love Allah, uh, you, see, you worship Allah as if you see Allah, but you know that Allah sees you all the time. Again, I'm trying to match the three levels uh, into this. 
let's take a short break come back talk a little bit more about evidence once it comes to the dis distinguishment between these three levels bi'idnillahi ta'ala using evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah don't go away I'll be right back assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh in the desert you can see God creation in the desert you can see God creation assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dear viewers brothers and sisters in Islam I welcome you once again to Aqeedah Matters as we discuss the subject of Islam, Iman, Ihsan. Uh, before I carry on, I want to remind you that you can always communicate with me uh, using emails, aqeedamatters at huda.tv or kareem at huda.tv. Uh, you can always uh, post your uh, uh, critique, uh, suggestions, recommendations, whatever you feel like posting, go ahead on Facebook page, www.facebook slash aqeedah matters uh, and also there is one uh, extra benefit you get if you like that page and uh, and receive um, notifications from that facebook page is uh, when we post these videos uh, of these episodes because again i want to warn you that i am presenting by the grace of allah the matters of aqeedah in a certain sequence i'm not randomly choosing subjects and addressing them and, and sometimes uh, if you may not understand something rest assured that it was detailed in a previous episode um, we call it Hadith Jibreel and we mentioned that based on this Hadith uh, there is Islam there is Iman there is Ihsan now uh, there is an evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah to actually draw that distinction yes the first evidence is the verse in Surah Al-Hujurat. قَالَتِ الْأَعْرَابُ آمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَإِنْ تُطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَا يَلِتْكُمْ مِنْ أَعْمَالِكُمْ شَيْئًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguished between Iman and Islam when he said the Bedouin say we believe. He said to them say no you have not believed rather you submit it. You are at the entry level. You are at the entry level. Now if you keep the obedience of Allah and his messenger you will upgrade to the level of Iman. So uh, again, uh, this is important to realize that um, you don't wake up in the morning and say, okay, I'm a mu'min today. No, you have to what? Practice religion. Uh, the, the, obeying the commands, stay away from the haram. The more you do this, the more you do that, maybe three, four, five, six, seven months, you end up at this level of what? Of, of, of iman. The second evidence, uh, a beautiful hadith for Bukhari, uh, we know that right after the conquest of Mecca, uh, a lot of people in Mecca accepted Islam. They are newly reverting uh, to Islam. They reverted to Islam. Uh, they left disbelief, polytheism, and they accepted Islam. So they were not really nourished uh, in aqidah like the companions. They were not really, uh, their tasdiq, their level of tasdiq was not there. Their, their, their tawheed, level of tawheed, the knowledge of tawheed was not there. The, the statement, the saying of the heart was not as strong as the companions who uh, spent the last uh, uh, 20 years, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the 18 or 18 years to be accurate, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, actually 20, uh, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 18, 19, 20 maybe, huh? with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So right after one of the battles, right after Fath Makkah, the conquest of Mecca, Al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was distributing the booty of war, the spoils of war, Al Anfal, the things which they gain from a certain battlefield. So he decided to give, to give huh, certain individuals more than others. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas an, was sitting in, beside the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he would comment by saying, 
أعطيت فلانا ولم تعط فلانا وهو مؤمن You give him this one and you did not give this one when he is a believer The Prophet said he may be just a Muslim أو مسلم See that? So here is the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم a distinguish between a mu'min and a Muslim. A mu'min, we're trying to furnish the evidence that there is a distinguishment between Islam and, and, and Iman. Uh, Iman, your tasdiq is higher, your commitment to the religion is higher, your, your certainty uh, is higher, certainly, but Islam is the bare minimum, the bare uh, minimum. So we establish the evidence that uh, Islam and Iman are uh, two different levels. طيب, the scholars they say, and, and, and this is, uh, when Islam is mentioned alone, when Iman is mentioned alone, and when Islam and Iman are mentioned together in the same sentence, what would it mean? For you to settle this, Shaykh al-Islam, rahimahullah, he said, there are certain words in our religion called Al-Fadun Mushtarakah. They may end up carrying the same meanings. They end up mutually uh, associated. One of them is Islam and Iman. Sadaqa and Zakah. Another example. Zakah and Sadaqa. Now, when these terms are mentioned, look at this. إذا اجتمع افترقا وإذا افترقا اجتمع I know you're English speaking and I'll explain that. <laughs> when these terms are together, they will be different. Their meanings will be different. Each one of them would refer to a certain meaning. But if they are mentioned individually, then they would mean both. I'll break down this to you in down-to-earth language. When I say Islam, I mean Iman. When I say Islam, I mean Iman with it. When I say Iman, I mean Islam with it. But I say Islam and Iman, then Islam means the Shahadatayn, Salah, Zakah, Hajj, Ramadan, and Iman means the six articles of faith. Each one of them would go to a different meaning. Very important. So when you read Islam, Iman, uh, in, in, in a sentence here and there, that is how they end up uh, uh, being associated uh, in a way. Dear viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, like they say, Every muhsin, which is the highest level now, is a believer, is a mu'min, and a Muslim. And every believer, every mu'min, is a Muslim. But not every Muslim is a mu'min, is a believer, and not every believer is a muhsin. <laughs> Confusing you here. Here is a better way to put it. The muhsin, the one who whose consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so high, skyrocketing. Ain Allah, Allah is watching me. You know, if you want to reach that level, uh, you must do a lot of nawafil. You must do a lot of voluntary acts of worship. You can't stop at the mandatory. And you must stay away even if they dislike things, which Allah uh, labeled it to be disliked in a way. You must do that. And uh, uh, here it is. When you say something, remember Allah hears it. When you do something, remember Allah looks at it. And when you think about something in your chest, remember Allah knows what you're thinking about. Imagine this. That's Ihsan. Uh, you know, like that story from Musnad Ahmad. When Abdullah ibn Umar anhuma went to the desert with his servant Nafi' uh, to spend the night out there in the nomad. Abdullah ibn Umar was famous of freeing slaves from slavery. So he spotted a shepherd coming down from the mountain. He asked him, are you a shepherd? He said, yes. He said, sell me a sheep. 
uh, before freeing slaves he would uh, from slavery by the way he would test them first uh, if they are uh, possessors of of of, of deen of iman of the religion uh, he would be more encouraged to do so to the extent some of these slaves would pretend uh, righteousness and piety in front of him and and his servant Nafi would actually warn him regarding this. He would say, listen, anyone who deceives us using Allah, we will, I will get deceived for that person. Fa, he saw that shepherd coming down with his flock of sheep. He wanted to test him. He said, uh, are you a shepherd? He said, yes. Be'ni shah, sell me a sheep. He said, listen, I'm a slave. And that flock of sheep, which you see, does not belong to me. It belongs to my master. Here's the test. Sell one sheep to me and tell your master that the wolf ate it. You know what he said? وَأَيْنَ Allah? Where is Allah? I can't do this. Where is Allah? هَذَا وَالْإِحْسَانِ Allah will see me. I'm lying. I'm lying. Uh, imagine. So, so, that muhsin is a stranger amongst the mu'mins, the believers. And the believer is a stranger amongst the Muslims. Huh. Important here. And the Muslim is a stranger amongst who? The kuffar, the disbelievers. Huh. Imagine this. So, muhsineen are strangers. You would feel stranger amongst believers. And believers are strangers amongst Muslims. People who just perform the outward actions of Islam and they do possess the bare minimum of tasdiq, you're a stranger amongst them. So you would sit with them and they are backbiting and gossiping and say, what these guys, these guys don't believe in Allah, what's wrong with them, you know, and so forth. So, uh, uh, another way to, to put this, uh, and, and it was beautifully, beautifully uh, put together, imagine this, imagine these circles. Uh, the circle of Ihsan is a smaller one. Underneath it, the circle of Iman is a little bit wider. Underneath it, the circle of Islam is wider. Underneath it is the big circle, which is the circle of disbelief. And a lot of people are disbelievers. So, Ihsan, imagine this, you're the highest level of the religion. If you drop, where are you going to go? Huh? You're going to go to the circle beneath it which is what iman I'm gonna believe I'm gonna be called a believer it's still a good one and this is the mandatory iman this is the wajib iman hmm. then what if you drop from that circle you're gonna go to the circle of muslimin muslim but be careful this is the bare minimum be careful Beneath that, below that, there is no Iman, there is Kufr. That's why if you fall from that circle, you go into what? Disbelief. Disbelief wal ayadu billah. You lose the Akhirah. That is why you never, you should never, dear viewers, dear brothers and sisters, compromise at the level of Islam only, at the level of the bare minimum, al Iman, the comprehensive one, uh, it's called the bare minimum iman or the origin the origin uh, uh, of iman uh, you should not settle for that you should upgrade yourself with this dear viewers brothers and sisters in islam we presented to you the subject of iman uh, one last thing before i i, I carry on here uh, just introduce to you the uh, next uh, piece which we will discuss that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Huh. Again, remember when we say that if Iman is used, then Allah is also calling those who are aslamu. Huh. Ya ayyuhal ladheena aslamu. So the Muslims go under this command. Uh, very important. One last piece that, that, that is I really wanted to, to do. The origin of Iman is the tasdiq. The origin of Iman is the tasdiq. The origin of Islam is the action of the heart. Some of you may not grasp this so much, is irrelevant, but it's a very technical 
piece that I wanted to uh, simply present to you. With this, we identified who is a believer, who is a Muslim, and the definition of this. Now, can this Islam, can this Iman be nullified? Absolutely. Absolutely. It can be nullified. Like wudu. You make wudu. You go to the bathroom, clean yourself, you wash the limbs which you're supposed to wash to make wudu. Now can this wudu be nullified? Absolutely. If you come up with one of the nullifiers. Likewise your Islam. Likewise your Iman can be nullified. He can go out of the fold of Islam into the fold of Kufr. Ah. Insha'Allah, the next segment, uh, or actually the continuation of Iman, insha'Allah, will present to you 10 nullifiers that can nullify your Islam, that can nullify your Iman, that can take you out of the fold of Islam. But before I present these 10, I must first present to you the guidelines, the etiquettes, the rules, the principles that must be adopted in labeling a certain particular Muslim to be a non-Muslim. I always like to keep saying that line. And I'm basing it on Hadith Ibn Umar fil Bukhari. The fastest way to come out of Islam, to come out of the fold of Islam yourself, is to label another Muslim to be a non-Muslim. To label another Muslim to be a Kafir. Why? Because if he is not, then you are. Very dangerous. That's why there are certain rules, certain guidelines that our scholars taught us. How to go about labeling other people to be disbelievers. Insha'Allah, in the next episodes, we will begin with those, talking about uh, the rules, the guidelines uh, that we must follow uh, in order to label someone who is a Muslim to be a non-Muslim, because there are religious rulings contingent upon that ruling. If this Muslim is marrying a Muslim woman, you have to separate between them. He can't eat his meat anymore. Imagine, there are rulings. The, the matter is not just like that. So there, there are certain rules that we must f uh, follow, certain guidelines that we must follow in doing so. And then after that, we'll present to you, Bismillah ta'ala, the nullifiers of Iman or Islam. We can say both. And after we finish that segment, we will then embark on the first article of faith which is the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I love you all for the sake of Allah. Whatever I said right is from Allah. Whatever I said wrong is from myself and shaitan, and I ask Allah to forgive me. Until the next episode of Aqeedah Matters, I leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Deep in the deepest ocean, high on the highest mountain, in the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. In the forest, in the desert, you can see God creation. He made us different nation, and there's no differentiation. He made us different nation. And there's no differentiation If you're black, if you're white We are all God creation If you're black, if you're white We are all God creation Deep in the deepest ocean High on the highest mountain In the forest, in the desert You can see God